live from Washington, D.C., it's theCUBE. Covering Inforum DC 2018. Brought to you by Infor. Well, we are back this afternoon here in Washington, D.C. at the Walter Washington Convention Center as we continue our coverage here of Inform 2018 along with Dave Vellante. I'm John Walls, and we now welcome Mr. Cormac Waters to the program today, EVP of EMEA and uh, APAC at Infor. Cormac, good to see you, sir. Nice to be here. So we're going to talk about Guinness uh, <laughs> over in Ireland. <laughs> uh, 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 Cormac's from, from Dublin, so we had a little conversation. We're getting a primer here. It's actually the best, best conversation we should have. Right? Yeah, so right. be all the we'll save that. that for the end. How about okay, that? Okay. Yeah. So you're fairly new, right? Uh, yeah. About yeah. a year A little less, but so. ten, 10 months or so. Okay, yeah. So not that I'm counting it by the day, but it's No, no, months, no, right? always going forward, never <laughs> backward. Uh, but a big plate you have, right? With, right. with uh, me and APAC. Um, different adoptions, different viewpoints, different perspectives. We've talked a lot about really kind of focused domestically here yeah. you know, over the past couple of days. Your world's a little different than that, though, right? It is, it is. I mean, um, and it's, it's, it's very good that you, you've actually recognized it, because that, that's actually the biggest challenge that we have. We have, I mean, I, to be a little bit humble about it, I think we've got world-class products and solutions. I actually fundamentally believe that. But we have, we have lots of different languages, cultures, and localization requirements in the multiple countries that we look after. So it's great to have a, a great product, but it needs to be in French, Spanish, Portuguese, Italian, <laughs> Swedish, Norwegian, Finnish, Arabic, mm -hmm. which most of them are, right? So um, it's when customers realize that we are actually international and localized for many, many markets, that now we become a, an intriguing option for them if you're a, a multinational business with subsidiaries all over the world. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's good that Infor is big enough to do that, um, we need to do a better job at letting everybody know that we've done that, if that makes any sense. Sure. Yeah. So what's happening in Europe? Maybe we, you know, this, you know, Europe's always pockets. There's no, I mean, mm -hmm. yes, EU, but there's really still no one Europe. What's going on? I mean, obviously we have, have, have you know, Brexit hanging over our head. Uh, I've felt like the U.S. markets are maybe a little bit overheated and Europe is potential, has potential upside. Yeah. And it seems like others, you know, you know seem to agree with that. But What's happening on the ground? Any specific interesting areas? Southern Europe so, still a concern? Maybe you could give us an update. Yeah, so, so Brexit is, is quite a dominant conversation. Um, so I, I'm from Ireland. Uh, I live in Dublin, but I'm, I'm, I'm working all over Europe and, and the Middle East and Africa and the, Neth, and, and the Far East. So I, I don't get to be at home very often, except at weekends. Uh, London is our, really our regional headquarters for, from a European perspective. And Brexit is on everybody's, everybody's mind. Interestingly, when you go outside the UK, Brexit is not such a big topic because um, that's Europe. And they're kind of going, well, they don't want to be here. They don't need to be here, right? So it's, 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 it's <laughs> a little bit of that. And it's saying, well, we'd like them to stay, but if they don't want to stay, well, mm -hmm. don't wait around. But in the UK, it's, it's causing a lot of uncertainty. Mm -hmm. And the UK is one of our biggest markets. So a lot of uncertainty. Um, what would be best is if we just knew what was going to happen. Mm -hmm. And then we can deal with it. Um, and actually, once we know what's going to happen, that's going to bring a degree of change. And change from our industry perspective means there's going to be some requirements that emerge. So we need to be ready to, to serve those, which is opportunity, opportunity. But the uncertainty is just slowing down investment. So we need that to be resolved. So clarity is obviously a good thing in, any, the in, in any market. Okay, are there any hot spots? I mean, is, you know, what's Yeah, actually, what's in, in, booming? We're, we're doing, we're doing uh, for us, the hot spots right now, we're doing incredibly well in Germany, mm. um, which, uh, one of, our, one of our lesser known competitors is a small company called SAP, um, and they're headquartered obviously in Germany. Um, so it's quite, it's quite interesting to see that we're actually taking a lot of market share in Germany, which is fantastic. Um, that's, that's a little bit unexpected, but it's going very well right now. Um, and we're seeing a ton of activity in the Asia Pacific. Um, I would say that region is probably our fastest growing in all of Infor. Um, and consistently so for several quarters and maybe past a year at this point. Um, so Asia Pacific, Germany, UK. And then as it happens, um, we, we are doing very well in Southern Europe, which is a combination of countries, really France, Italy, Spain, Portugal, uh, and Greece. Um, hard to put it down to which particular country is doing well, but there seems to be a general uplift in, in that region because they were hit the hardest, arguably, by, by the crash back in 2008. Mm -hmm. So they've definitely come out of that now. Do, do and, and when they come out, excuse me, I'm sorry, John, sorry, but they, they come out, cloud becomes more important to oh. them, right? Yeah, it, I mean, no, yeah, absolutely. I mean, so the, anyone who's been 
delaying investment for multiple years can actually leapfrog what's been happening and, and jump straight to what you might call the future. So um, lots of companies, lots of our customers are now trying to simplify their business. So cloud is a great equalizer. It says we, 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 we believe in your what we call last mile functionality per industry. Um, and that should make the projects shorter, more, more compact, more, more predictable and the infrastructure uh, worries go away because that's our responsibility on the customers. We definitely saw that in the US in 2008, 2009. The CFOs came in and said shift to the cloud because we want to shift CapEx to mm -hmm. OpEx. Uh, and then when, when we came out of the downturn, they said, wow, this stuff actually works pretty well. Yeah. Double down on it. Right. And then there were other business benefits that they wanted to accelerate. Yeah. And so maybe Southern Europe was a little bit behind in terms of that adoption. That might be the case, right? And they're, they're picking up. And, and there's, I mean, what we're seeing is a lot of other advantages. I mean, um, not to make this a sales pitch, but I am here, so I'll Go try. For it. <laughs> <laughs> You've got a microphone. I've got a microphone, and I'm Irish, so I have to talk. Right? <laughs> um, so the, what the cloud is actually doing is, lots of companies have put in big ERP over the, the, the years, the decades, and, and they get stuck at various points and maybe years behind because upgrades become painful and really want to avoid them. So what they're seeing is if they can get onto the cloud, they never need to upgrade again because it's always current because we upgrade it every week or every month and they're never falling behind. So they want to be ready to take advantage of the innovations that they know about and those that they don't even know about. So by keeping on the latest version, that, that, that opportunity is open to them. Also, there's a big issue in, in, in Europe specifically about a thing called GDPR, which is data protection, security. So. Um, we believe that we can do a better job of providing that than any individual company because we provide it for everybody and therefore we can, our resources can be applied once and then deployed many times. Whereas if you're an individual customer, you've got to have that speciality and put it in place. So GDPR is a genuine issue in Europe because it's, uh, the fines are absolutely huge if a company is found sure. to breach it. Well, it's become a template for the, the globe now. I mean, you know, California's yes. just started moving right. in that direction, and I mean, GDPR has set the framework, really. Uh, and, and, and just to follow up on that, yeah, because and now you're, you're dealing in a very different regulatory climate yes. than, than certainly here in the United States, um, and many U.S. companies are finding that out, as right. we know, uh, overseas right now. So how do you deal with that in terms of the, kind of this balkanized approach that you have to have, that you know that, uh, you know, what's working here it can't, doesn't necessarily translate to overseas. And plus you have, you know, you're serving many masters yeah. and, and not just one or two. Is so the, what's, what's happening and what the guys in R&D have done very, very well is they understand the requirement of, of in this instance, GDPR. Uh, they look at the other regulatory requirements, let's say in Australia, which is subtly different, but it is different. And, and they can take, well, what's the, what do we have to do What's the most extreme we have to achieve? And if we do that across our suite into our platform suite, the Infor OS, that can then be applied to all the applications. Um, and then it becomes relevant to, uh, to the US. So it's almost like some requirement across the seas being deployed and becoming very relevant back here because over here, you, you do need to be aware of the data protection as well. It's just not as formalized yet, but it is a, it's coming. a, brewing, a, a brewing issue, right? What about Asia Pacific, uh, so you got responsibility for yeah. Japan and, and China and the rest of the region, right. which are sort of three distinct. They really are, right? There's, there's several sub-regions in, in, in the one region. Um, and uh, the team down there, are, 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 as I say, arguably the most successful team in Infor right now. They're, they're doing great. So um, Helen and, and the crew. So you see Australia and New Zealand, then you see Southeast Asia, and then you see the China, Japan, and so on. So um, different dynamics in different markets, uh, some more mature than others. Um, Japan is very developed, but very specific. Uh, and you, you do need very specialized local skills to succeed. Arguably, Australia, New Zealand um, is, 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 is not that dissimilar from, say, some of the European countries, um, even though there are differences. And, and I would never dream to tell an Australian or a New Zealander that they're the same as Europeans, because uh, I, 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 I get, <laughs> I, I smile when people say you're from the UK and you're not from Ireland, <laughs> so I understand the differentiation. Um, and Southeast Asia, there's, there's, a, there's a ton of local custom, local language, uh, local business practice that needs to be catered for. So, um, but we, we seem to be doing okay down there. It's, as I say, fastest growing market at scale. It's not like it's growing ridiculously fast but from a small base. It's a, a big market already and growing the fastest. In, in China, what's that like? You have to partner up and oh, yeah. sort of JV in China? You, you have to partner up. I mean, there are several of, of the key growth markets that it's best to go in with partners. Um, 
customers like to see we've got a presence uh, so that they can touch and feel the in for entity. But um, we, we can't achieve the scale we need and the growth we want fast enough without partnering. So we have to go with partners to give us the resources we need. And in the Middle East, so my business partner, co-host John Furrier is on a 20 hour flight to Bahrain. Right. The Cube Bahrain. The Bahrain was the first country in the Middle East to declare cloud first. Mm -hmm. AWS is obviously part of that story, yeah. they're part of your story. So what's going on over there? Is it a, is it a growing market? Is it sort of yeah. something you're still cracking? Or? No, no, again, it's, um, it's, it's, it's growing. Uh, we have, uh, several key markets down there. Big in hospitality in, in, in that part of the world. I mean, hotels, yeah. uh, tourism obviously, um, shopping, um, very, very interesting markets. And healthcare, uh, interesting enough. I mean, I think arguably some of the world's best hospitals are in that region. Um, definitely the best funded hospitals. Um, which probably is, the which most comfortable. And probably <laughs> most comfortable, right? So um, again, part of, of, of our strength is the, the number of industries we serve so if you can put in our, our platform, as it were, then you can have multiple of the industry flavors applied. What's, what's, because what's interesting in that part of the world, there seem to be a number of, I guess we call them conglomerates. So maybe family owned or, or, or region owned, and they have just a different array of businesses all under the one ownership. So you would have a, a, a retailer that's also doing some tourism, that's also doing some manufacturing, so if we can put our platform in and then our in industry flavors, they can get one solution to, to cover it all, which is a little bit unusual and, and works for us. Your scope is enormous. I mean, essentially you're the head of non-US, right? I mean, is yeah, that, and, 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 and LATAM, at this, Latin America as well. So you know, uh, that's part no, of the, that, that's not. Excluding, excluding, excluding so, the Americas. So there's Americas and then everything else, and you're everything yeah, else. That's okay. what I, I missed the meeting, you see, so they just gave it to me. <laughs> <laughs> or you raised your hand at the wrong time. I wasn't there. <laughs> so how do you organize to be successful, right? You obviously have to have strong people in the right. region. So the key is people, right? So what we, uh, we, we are organized somewhat differently to over here. So we, we, we've gone for a regional model. So I, I have six sub-regions that I worry about. So four in Europe, uh, the Nordic countries, uh, Scandinavian, Sweden, Norway, Finland, Denmark. Um, we call Western, which is uh, Ireland, UK, and the Benelux. Germany uh, is Central and East, and then Southern is the Latin countries, Spain, Italy, Portugal, Greece, and so. And then we've got Middle East and Africa, and then we've got Asia Pacific. So I've got six regional teams, uh, all headed by a regional leader and each of them are trying to be as self-contained as they can. And where we, we see we've got a, an opportunity to move into something new, we bring in a, one team working with me directly as an incubator. Uh, for example, we're, we're driving a specific focus on uh, healthcare in, in our part of the world, because it's very big over here. Mm -hmm. We haven't quite cracked the, the, the code over there. So when we get some scale, then it'll move into the regions. But for now, that's incubating under me. And, and what about in-country? Do you have country managers? In, in, we you have, know, one in the um, UK, one in France, one yeah, in Germany? What? We have what we call local leaders, uh -huh. right? So, um, and, and in some cases, it can be a sales-oriented individual, others it can be consulting, others it can be the local HR guy. Mm -hmm. So it's, that's, that's more for us to make sure we're building a sense of community within Infor, rather than it being more customer-facing. Um, so because we're, we're still trying to make sure that there's, um, there's a reasonably scarce scarcity of, of senior skills. So regionalizing lets us deploy across several countries and that works with the customer base, but for employees we need local leaders to give them a sense of feeling home and, and, and attached. So okay, so the, the regions are kind of expertise yes. centers, if you will. So I was going to ask about product expertise. Yeah. Where does that come from? Is that, so it's not parachuted in from the US, I presume? No, we have a, no, we're, we're pretty much self-sufficient actually. Um, which is great. Uh, so from both the, what we call solution consulting, which is the product expertise, and then consulting, which is the, the, the project deployment. And we're doing more and more of our deployments with partners. Um, as I say, we need to really rapidly embrace that partner ecosystem to give us the growth opportunity. R&D is all over the world. So, um, and that's not under my direct control. Uh, so for our major suites, take for example, uh, LN, happens to be headquartered out of Barneveld in the Netherlands from a historic perspective, which is great. Uh, M3, Stockholm, which is also great. But lots of the development resorts are in Manila and in right. India, right? So we work closely with the guys, even though they don't actually report to me. And, and out of your, the, the whole area, the, the areas of your responsibility, what, what's the best growth opportunity? We, we all think about China, right? And that opportunity, but that's been fits and starts for a lot yeah, of people. Yeah. Um, 
I, I think we've got multiple opportunities. There's, there's a, there's, there's look at it, looking at it in a few ways. You can look at geographically, and you would say China. You could look at Eastern Europe, and you could look at Africa. Uh, from, there's a ton of opportunity in, in those regions, geographically. Interestingly, we, we're also at a point where I think uh, the Nordics, um, we've got a, a very solid base historically and so on, but we, we haven't probably put enough focus on there in recent times that the opportunity to really scale the Nordics is, is quite significant. And then they can look at it from a product perspective. So, uh, for example, we have um, what we believe to be world leading, and actually a company called Gartner would equally agree with us, uh, Enterprise Asset Management, EAM. That's a product suite that can fit across all of our industries. Mm -hmm. And I think that could well be uh, a significant growth area for us across the entire six regions. Um, and it's a huge focus here at, at, the, at the conference, actually. So we can do it by product, so EAM, healthcare, or by region. I think Eastern Europe, China, and uh, Africa, as well as the Nordics. And then the other big opportunity is share, sh just share, share gains, mm -hmm. right? Market share gains, particularly in Europe, I would think, with your background and yep. and <laughs> no, completely. I mean, and this, that's why I said it's really interesting that we're actually winning market share in Germany, right? Yep. So, mm -hmm. uh, who would have thought that a few years ago? So that's that's a, and that's a big market. I mean, right. Germany, UK, France, Italy, yep. they're huge, right? I mean, uh, UK is what 65 million people. Uh, it's a big economy, so we've got m many of the world's G7 mm -hmm. in, in, in our backyard. So mm -hmm. we just need to really double down on those and, and give them the opportunities to grow that we need. And, and just back to Japan for a second, Japan has traction. I mean, it takes a long time to, to, to crack Japan. I know it pers from personal experiences. Really? Okay, interesting. Yeah, you just got to go many, many times and meet That's people. And right, and, and, and it's, it's a different culture of, you know, when, when you, you think they're saying yes and you think <laughs> you're there, and it, that's, not, that's just yes to the next step, <laughs> all right? So it does take a while to get there. We, we've, we've, we've actually cracked it to some extent that we've now got some solid referenceability mm -hmm. and, and some good wins. Um, but we, we need local leaders in Japan to really crack the code there. Yeah. And, and then uh, once you're in, you're in. I think, I think you that know. once you become, you've proven yourself, then it's a lot of word of mouth and reference selling. Yeah, right. So that's going to work for us. Right. Well, I hope you get home this weekend. Are you headed home? <laughs> yes, <laughs> actually, well, I'm lucky enough. My, my, my wife is originally from Chicago. Okay. Uh, so she and uh, our daughter has come over for the weekend to go sightseeing in Washington. So, oh, uh, great. Uh, so nice. that, that'll be fun. So then we, we go home on Sunday. You're adopted home for the week then. That's exactly right. Good right. deal. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we'll talk Guinness in just a bit. Uh, <laughs> Cormac, thanks for the time though. We appreciate it. Thank you, gentlemen. Good to see appreciate you. It. Thank you. Right. All right. Back with more here from Inform 2018. And you're watching live on theCUBE here in DC.